suddenly developing an allergic reaction to red meat. And there's a little, see this tick? That is a tick. That's to blame. Joining us now is the medical director for allergy and asthma care of New York, uh, Dr. Clifford Bassett. Doctor, thank you for being with us. You're with NYU, right? That's right. The medical center there. Okay, so we cut, uh, I had a quick shot of the tick. It's called the Lone Star Tick because it has kind of a, a white little star on its back. And that's, it kind of looks like the uh, Lone Star, the, one of the logos of the Lone Star State, the state of Texas. So people go out, maybe they're hunters. They go out or they'll go out camping. They don't even know that the tick is on them. It's in their system now, and they have an aller allergic reaction when they're eating red meat. This is weird. This is weird even for an allergist myself who's been in practice for over 15 years, seeing all kinds of food allergies, both in adults and kids. What's really strange is the University of Virginia, the researchers were very clever, and they found that a variety of people were having meat allergies, four or 500 patients, very high. And what they found was they all had a history of being bitten by a tick. So that was their clue. There was something going on, perhaps, with this Lone Star tick, which is generally in the southeastern part of the United States. So what happens? You get bitten by this tick, right. very itchy. The body makes an antibody, which is also present in red meat, lamb, pork, all mammalian meat. And as a result of it, when you eat at the barbecue and you have a nice burger or something like this, four to six hours later, full-blown allergic reaction, hives, anaphylactic shock. And what's unusual is... It's not immediate, so it could be six hours later, and people coming into emergency rooms in the middle of the night, they think they're having a heart attack, and they're having anaphylaxis. Well, isn't from this that odd? Don't we normally have allergic reactions right away to something? Typically, with a food allergy, it could be seconds or minutes, and it occurs very quickly. So it's very, very unusual to have a delayed reaction and have such a severe and generalized anaphylactic reaction such as this. So if you have it, you run in with a tick, and then you become allergic to meat, does that stay with you the rest of your life? The researchers said the good news may be, and they think this is the case, that over time if you have less exposure to ticks, perhaps the antibody response will diminish and perhaps you'll be able to introduce meat again. The key is see a savvy food allergy expert and allergist, get tested and find out, be prepared. All patients at risk of anaphylaxis, whether it be meat or other allergies, need right. to have an epinephrine pen or an EpiPen. That's the only antidote oh for allergic reactions if it's a life-threatening allergic reaction. So people have to have an action plan in place. And our patient population, whether it be this or other food allergies, we get the job done. What do you think of the study? Is there enough proof? Do you believe this? I think they're looking at a link, and there's more researchers now looking at University of Virginia researchers now the link between this specific tick and an immune response. They do know, which is very interesting, once you get bitten by the tick, the level of antibody to this particular antibody, which is a sugar, goes up immediately. So it seems to be something with this particular Lone Star tick. Well, the Lone Star tick, though, is, in, is it in a, a big part of the country? Generally speaking, Bible Belt, Southeast is the big area where it's present. But I go, there are case reports just in Long Island just a few weeks ago talking about an, an allergist patient yeah. in the bathroom passing out after having oh this reaction. Goodness. Well, check it out. The yellow area there, that's where the Lone Star tick can be found. It's a